in the Christian tradition is when divinity is attributed to Jesus, there's a an emotional component where there's an emotional just emotional dimension right component where people sense that there's that God is in solidarity with them by becoming human, which I know it might be considered it's considered probably offensive, right? I'm not trying to disrespect my way, but meaning that people feel oftentimes will feel alone or isolated or in very difficult situations. So when they identify with maybe the creator is stepping into their reality, there's a sense where they feel a close a closeness, uh, uh, and you read about this in liberation theory and things like that, but I think, oh, the creator's identifying with you. And, and it's, it's almost dark uh, in some way, if that makes sense. I'm not saying that makes it true, but that feeling doesn't make it objectively true. Does, how would, would the revelation of God as understood in Hebrew scriptures, Judaism, speak to that dimension, or does it? Did you all understand that question? In Christian teachings, there is a, a doctrine of incarnation. It's expressed most vividly in the prologue of John, that somehow the Word became flesh and dwelt among you. I don't want to misrepresent your words, but I just want to make it clear. And therefore, that would be a source of comfort to someone who's struggling mightily with pain, loneliness, a self-esteem that's been shattered, a person who, whose constant companion is hurt, not from a cashier in Walmart, but from the people who are closest to you, who betrayed you. And that's what's conveyed in the Christian Bible. Now, it, the doctrine of Trinity is a later Christian invention. The word is invented by Tertullian, a a Latin church father in the end of the very end of the second century from Carthage, very important part of the empire, critical. And Tertullian did not believe in the doctrine of Trinity as it is orthodoxy today, but eventually would become an orthodoxy in the formula of the Nicene Creed, which some of you are familiar with. In order to solve man's problem, God came and dwelt among you. That's the message of the church. And, and in fact, that's what Christianity does. It essentially is an effort. And just like you asked that I not be offended by your words, I ask you, please don't be offended by my words. I care deeply. The Christian effort is to create God in the image of man. Judaism is, really is the reverse. It's God's successful effort in creating man in his image. The opposite. You listen to the Christian testimonials of people who are in the church. You're very likely to hear things like, I was so lost. I did things, if my wife knew, she'd never speak to me again. I was drunk, I was on drugs, I was broken. I was laying on the streets of New York, so high, and I found Jesus. I was puking on myself, and I found the cross. I was, there were needle marks all over my arm, and that's where I found Golgotha. Speak to someone who embraces the Jewish faith. Ask them, how did you manage to do that? This is what you're very unlikely to hear. Let me explain to you, boys and girls, what happened. I was in, in downtown LA. I was a prostitute. I was high. I was laying in my own vomit, stoned out of my mind. Tattoos in places that God never intended it. And I found Moses. <laughs> <laughs> it 
In fact, as it turns out, Christianity does appeal to our low estate and says that, in fact, all those things you feel about yourself, because when you look in the mirror, you don't see something attractive. And no matter how much you feel betrayed by others, you, you are probably your worst critic. Christianity affirms that and says you are in fact a sinner and you are lost and it's because of the original sin, an idea that's alien to the Jewish scriptures. And there is nothing you can do to earn your way to a place with God. If what I've just shared with you is foreign and you never heard it before, that means that you've never stepped into a church in your life. That's Romans chapter 3. That's the hallmark of Christianity. The hallmark of Christianity is not to say that you can raise yourself up and you're creating the image of God. And although it seems impossible that you could be redeemed, but I am your redeemer and I am not a man, Anochi el velo ish, Hosea chapter 11, verse 9. I didn't put that in your Bible, it's right there. And you can do it. And I know sometimes you feel lost and you can't forgive yourself, but I can forgive you. And the innocent cannot die for the sins of the wicked, Ezekiel chapter 18. But for the wicked person, what do I do? I've made horrible mistakes in my life, things I'm so ashamed of. There are secrets I have I would share with no one. There are thoughts I had awful. And I just can't bring myself to forgive myself for that abortion that I had when I was 15. I just can't do it. Prophet Isaiah says, it's all going to be okay. Seek the Lord when you find him. Call out him when he's nearby. If the person who sins turns away from his iniquity, I will freely forgive you. You'd forgive me. I haven't forgiven my father for what he did to me. I'll tell you why I do it. Because my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so too are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts higher than your thoughts. Are you ready to surrender to the God of Israel? What surrendering means is not just eating kosher as we have here tonight. It doesn't mean eating, just keeping Shabbat. It means that I am ready to subvert my own thoughts and stop trying to make God in my image. And what is Jesus always? A white guy. How oh, delightful. <laughs> Isn't that great, right? Jesus is the white guy. You would never have a black God. No way in the world. In Indonesia, the fourth largest country in the world, it's a white Caucasian guy, and he looks terrific in the coloring books of kids. How an Indonesian children, it's a multiracial country, but they don't look like they come from Sweden, right? But their Jesus looks like he's Nordic. How nice, blonde haired, blue eyed, white male. Here, smoking here, I would dream for hair like this, not a single split in. I mean, hair you would die for. People would give, isn't that interesting? Fat? Never. <laughs> Jesus isn't fat. He has, he's like, he's got a, he looks great. BMI perfect. <laughs> Why does he look like a white in great shape, blue eyed, good looking fellow? Why? He can't be a short, fat, bald, black, Asian. No way. Are you, are you a blasphemer? <laughs> You would say, said, not my Jesus. You see how grotesque this is? See what the bigotry inherent, that's why you had to ask for your, beg for your forgiveness beforehand. I'm, I'm sharing something with people who were in the church. Most of you were. So you know that I'm not setting up a straw man and then toppling it. I'm actually steel manning this. I'm presenting the Christian as clearly as possible. This is an abomination to God. And when we tell people that you can't do it, we're lying to them and we're committing an act of blasphemy. Our chief rabbi is Moses. Our rabbis are men like Isaiah, women like Devorah. 
people like Jeremiah that led the children of Israel for 41 years, as was Moses. These are our leaders. No white man, black man, we don't know and we don't care. HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves you. You are created in His image. You can do it. That's the message of Tanakh. Christianity appeals to our neck and down. Judaism appeals to our neck and up. And says you can integrate the whole package. It's all integrated. Christendom separates it through a dualistic ideas of, of celibacy that's advanced in the New Testament. Paul brags about his own celibacy in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and encourages others who are virgins to remain the same. But if your urge is too great, it's better to be married than to burn. Those are not my words. The Catholic Church wasn't insane. It's true that the rule that priests had to be celibate and no exceptions would develop, but they didn't pull that out of nowhere. Right? The idea was that intimacy was completely and thoroughly incompatible with godliness. What could be further from the truth? Look at the birth of Moses. And a man from Levi took a woman from Levi, and they made a baby. No infancy narism, virgin births. In fact, as it turns out, Daniel would warn us about people who would claim to be the Messiah who were born of a virgin. One thing you want to get straight about the Messiah... He's a son of a man, Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. If you're born a virgin, you can't be the Messiah. I didn't make that up, it's in the Bible. So what I would say is that your question is rich, because it really, I could respond and say, well, and it would be true that the Torah and the prophets that followed Moses told us very specifically that God is not a man, that he'll lie, he's not a mortal, he'll not change his mind. So the reason why... We don't worship a statue, as an example. Oh, couldn't God dwell in a statue? God says, don't do that. Then any religion could be true if we follow those feelings. And I, I spent enough time in Bali observing really good people worshiping statues and gods like Hanum and the monkey god of Hinduism. The Torah simply says, that's poison for you. That will kill you. It will destroy you. Philosophically, but if it makes me feel good, the Torah is saying, but it's poison. Don't smoke. But you don't know, when I puff on the cigarette, I feel so, so relaxed. You do now, but it'll kill you. Torah is simply saying, I, I know sin gives you a temporary pleasure, but in the long term, it'll destroy you. And, and let me show you a picture of what a, a cancerous lung looks like, what a smoker lung looks like, just to really tell you. The, 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 not only here in the United States, but all over the world, there are warnings on cigarettes because, not because anyone wants a person, a smoker, to die. It's rather that a smoker would quit his ways, his physically destructive ways, that he might live. And the Torah is saying, I know it makes you feel good, but it will destroy you. Therefore, it's against the will of God. Moreover, the idea in itself, instead of raising someone else, rather says, it affirms and says, you are a sinner. In the language of Augustine, whose theology was realism, that you were the real presence, you really were present in Adam at the time of the sin, and you're infected with the original sin, and nothing could save you, and there's no initiative that could save you. Augustine amps all of that, and Calvin <laughs> much further. So there's the real answer. It, it, it's, it's the exact wrong message. Thank you. I don't know love. אשר מלך בטרם כל יציר נברא לעת נעשה בחפצו כל אזי מלך אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי כפלות הכל לבדו, ימלוך נורא, והוא היה